There's a great number of books in this collection. Illuminated books of old as well. Black books are not kept here, however. They're in a secret compartment near the furnace. You have goosebumps. A sign of a devilish presence. You look around. Your only companion is humming among the silence. Suddenly, a dark figure steps out from the shade. It is a scribe, a Zagavr dealer. The wisdom that lies upon dark pages is not that of madness. You cannot paint me as a liar. You catch a whiff of the disgustingly sweet smell of rot. Cold fear enters your soul when you guess what might be the source of the smell. A human body lies nestled in the grass. It is already unrecognizable from decay. You see an old wooden cross upon its breast. You dig a small grave and push the dead man inside. You read a prayer and continue your journey. You see a small demon sitting on a hillock. In his hand, he is holding a snake by its tail, swinging it from side to side. A swishing sound of the snake's body and its angry hissing fill the swamp area. You watch as the demon twirls the snake above his head. It seems as if he'll never grow tired of it. Suddenly, the snake slips from its claws and flies right at you. It's clearly angry. Worse yet, the demon runs after its toy.
Despite the late hour, sounds of celebration are coming from the village. It turns out that a festive dinner has dragged on and turned into a non-stop festival. You notice the worried host, who looks like he can't wait to say goodbye to his guests. You offer to disperse the festival for the host. His distrust of you vanishes when, after a couple of your zagavers, furious winds send the suddenly worried guests scurrying home. The host rewards you with some of the dishes from a banquet table. Bathing in the moonlight, a moss-covered idol is hidden among the tall trees. You walk closer and see a fresh towel wrapped around it. The forest around you is silent. You meet a girl walking in the direction of Panteg. In her hands, she clutches a spindle that is emanating dark power. Old Yegor smirks, another of the spinner's victims. You call out to the peasant girl and convince her to get rid of the cursed spindle. Surprised, the girl follows your advice. All of a sudden, the tops of the trees rattle and clang. Alarmed, birds fly away, screaming in fear. You see a whirlwind filled with loose branches and dust from the road, headed your way. Your mentor removes a knife from his shirt and throws it at the whirlwind. It dissolves into a throng of enraged demons.
You freeze with horror. A dead girl is dangling from a spruce tree's gnarled branch. You can't move. This strange fruit sways back and forth with a creak in the cold wind. She died recently. As soon as you draw a circle, two demons burst from the skin of the hanged girl. It seems that demons have reached the body before you.
You feel at ease as you walk down the welcoming street of this village. A calm silence surrounds you. You almost pass through the village, but the silence is broken by loud laughter and the sounds of an accordion. Vasilisa, is that you? Come on, join us! I don't have the time. Come on, your work is such a bore. Five minutes here won't kill you. All right, I have a little bit of time. You sit by a house and dissolve in a deep song. On the field, you hear the steady sound of digging. Coming closer, you see a peasant moving the border of a field. The man looks startled when he sees you approach. He stops and calls out to you. Is that you, Igor? It is I, with Vasilisa. God bless. God bless? Huh. What are you looking at? I'm moving the border dish. What of it? Why are you moving the border ditch? You moved it quite far. For good reason. The Petrov's workers caused me nothing but grief. They deceived me, shot me in flower. Only they didn't steal in broad daylight. Have you spoken of it at the village meeting? I have. Not much good it did me. Petrov's folks silenced me right away. Huh. I'll tell you what. If you curse the demons, I'll pay you. All right, consider them cursed. You whisper a few cryptic words and make expressive gestures. They won't be able to say a word at the next village meeting. You can be sure about that. Thank you. Finally, some luck going my way. Here is some money. You take the money and go on your way. Near a small forest creek, you find a grassy meadow. Among other vegetation, you see one beautiful flower. It's blood red and bright even in the moonlight. You come closer and tie its stem with a silver thread. With a swift pull, you now have a new, valuable herb, Adam's head. You take the herb and get ready to go on your way. The closer you are to the house of the spinner, the more ominous the woods get. The decaying trunks of pines and spruces tower over the path like silent guardians. Your blood runs cold every other moment. You feel that the border between worlds is very thin in this part of the forest. There are bright strings of some kind on the path. There are many different skulls and charms. You approach the skull hanging by the door. Suddenly, the bony head starts shaking. A burning coal that serves as an eye socket stops you in your tracks. Oh, joy! And Noah, are we? Finally, some fun! My eye isn't what it used to be. Who's that old-timer over there? I think I know him. Will you let me pass to see the spinner? With pleasure, but I'm ordered to test Noah. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be hanging around here in the first place. Anyway, we'll do it just like in the fairy tales. 
I'll give you three riddles. Solve any one of them, and I'll let you through. Solve none, or refuse to answer, I'll take one of your eyes. I'm short one, you see. I'd say that's the least of your problems. Well, are you up to it? Wait, answer my questions first. I have no answers for you. I only ask questions. Well, are you up to it? I want to look around first. Even I can sense that these charms are strong. So, how do you like this Izba, huh? Ours is quite a bit cozier, isn't it? Go speak to that skull. He's a doorman of sorts here. That's the spinner for you. Always thinking up something crazy. What do you mean, speak to the skull? I mean that it used to be a kaldun. The regular folks aren't likely to chat with it. We, knowers, are used to this sort of thing. It's something new the spinner thought up. Skulls such as these used to hang on the trees around here like effigies of sorts. This one is used as a kind of test. <laughs> it would be best if you passed the test. This woman knows me, you see, but she's not familiar with you. What's with the yarn on the paths? You see it, do you? Ordinary folk don't. The yarn binds some poor Christians to the spinner. It's a strong and dark sorcery. You had better go and speak to the doorman. What else should I know about the spinner? Hush, child. These skulls report every little detail to that witch. Keep your lips sealed. Ready to solve some riddles? Have it your way. Ask your riddles. Listen to the first one, girl. There is a hamlet folks packed together tight. Come morning the cock sings, yet no man stands upright. There's a hamlet folks packed in tight. Come morning the cock crows, yet no man stands upright. A cemetery. Proper dead men do not rise from the graves. Correct. You solved the riddle. Only dead men don't rise in the morning. Believe me, I know. You may pass. Or you may try to guess another. All right, then. I'm off to see the spinner. Evening, Kapitalina Ivanovna. Evening to you too, Igor Yevlapievich. The voice of the spinner is quiet and smooth, like the rustling of pages in the black book. Brought you my little orphan. Mm, became a knower recently, this one. You sure did. But what are you thinking, poking around in my business? You took my spindle. It was doing my bidding, you know. I let it slide on account of you not knowing and all. God bless, Kapitalina Ivanovna. 
She has the stirrings of a nowhere ear girl. Wouldn't make a bad successor for you. So why are you here? Not just to check up an old woman, I should think. I wanted to ask you about this yarn you have here and around the house. This witcher is not yet for you, Vasilisa. In time you'll learn, perhaps. It's not the same as sending fiends for milk, mind you. We met your doorman. What of that skull? Some lousy Kaldun. A near it Nick, God rest his soul. Hasn't served his time yet, so he helps me around the house. He saw a dead girl in Villas of Woods. That was Marfa, I would guess. Didn't have money for a love potion. Was quite desperate, I gather. Well, it serves her right. I need a woven belt. A powerful one, Kapitalina Ivanovna. Yes, I know you came for a belt. Only why would I give one to you? Old Yegor warned me that I should watch my mouth around the spinner. How should I answer her? You're known all across the Uyest for weaving the best belts, Kapitalina Ivanovna. So I am. You aren't here without reason. I can indeed make good belts. You've become a knower, so I'll give you an enchanted belt. So what are you going to do with your chorts? How am I supposed to answer that? I really don't know what to do with them. Well, make them suffer, of course. Give them some back-breaking work. That's how you should treat them. Torment those filthy creatures. Only knowers can do some good. Well, turns out you're a good knower, girl. I'll give you a belt as a gift. Here, it's a good one. Later, I'll put you in touch with a pupil of mine. A fine man. Maybe it'll work out for the two of you, hmm? Thank you for the belt, Kapitalina Ivanovna. Well, thank you, Kapitalina. See you again sometime. See you soon. Farewell. 